this day, O beautiful Mother, on this day we give thee our love. Near thee, Madonna, fondly we hover, trusting thy gentle care to This day we ask to share, dearest mother, thy sweet care. Aid us ere our feet astray, wander from thy guiding. I was born to Edward and Florence Vanderbosch on February the 12th, 1932 in St. Joseph's Hospital in Mishawaka. We lived at the time of my birth, we lived at Webster Street, the corner of southeast corner of Webster and Grove in Mishawaka. And it had a huge hill right beside us there that they'd close off Grove Street in the winter and we'd slide down there and go all the way to the avenue. It was loads of fun. I was born during the Depression, which was kind of a tough time. We didn't get to do a whole lot, but we, us kids, we didn't know any different. Dorothy was the oldest one, then Jim. They were, they were close together. Then there was about seven years before me. And then after me, 21 months, came Ruthie, and then came Shirley. And my bedroom was upstairs. Well, for a while, we had three girls in one bedroom, in one bed. And we'd play train at night. We'd, we'd all lie facing one way, and we'd scratch each other's back. And then we'd say, choo, 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 and we'd all turn the other way and scratch. And I liked to be in the middle because I had to work, but I always got my back scratched. <laughs> On Sunday afternoons, our special treat, my dad would bring us, the three littlest girls, down to Battelle Park and then down the rock garden to throw plunkers in the river. And that, I remember taking one of my grandchildren, Kyle, down there once to throw plunkers in. He got a kick out of it too. But the rock garden, by the way, was built by the WPA workers uh, during the Depression. And my dad was one of the workers that gave him a little money on the side. Oh, and one day I was in the park. Carol! My mom used to just stand there and yell. She had a high voice anyway. <laughs> and I hear, came running home, back home, and here was my dad on the back porch with my toothbrush. They had asked me before I went if we had brushed our teeth, and I said, must have said yes, because the way I went, and then I came home, and here's my toothbrush, dry as a bone. <laughs> dry as a bone, and caught in the act, all I could do was cry. <laughs> Maybe that's why at the age of 30 I had false teeth. But of course, the park across the street is what we had, where we had spent our, all of our days nice ice skating rink across, right across the street from us that where we spent many, many evenings. It seemed like back in those days the, uh, you could freeze the ice and it would stay for a month or so, where nowadays it doesn't seem like it would freeze up. And my dad even would come over once in a while and skate. He thought that, with his cigar, he thought that was great. Tiny bubbles and Make me feel fine Tiny bubbles Make me warm all over With the feeling that I'm gonna love you till the end of time Tiny bubbles One Sunday, we, uh, my friend Janet Barrett and I went over to St. Joe, Mishawaka. They had what they called triple S dance, dances. The, I don't remember what service and I remember, don't remember what the S's stood for. But anyway, we were dancing and having a gay old time when all of a sudden 
this fellow asked me to dance. And then we were dancing and it was very slow, slow dance. And so we were dancing very slowly. He says, what's the name of this? Hot Satsang? <laughs> Which is a fast, jivey song. And I laughed at that and I think I've been laughing at him ever since. Butch Blake, his friend, was with Janet and, and, and your dad was with me. We came home in his little Model A car with a rumble seat. And I must confess, I fell in love with the rumble seat before I fell in love with him. <laughs> All right, here we go. It had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around, finally found somebody who could make me be true, could make me be blue, and even be glad just to be sad. Thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, he proposed he, in the middle of mass. We used to have two gospels at that time, and there was a second gospel. And he reached over with this little box, handed it to me. I just pretended I didn't see it. I just co covered it up because I didn't want anybody to see what was in there. <laughs> anyway, that was my diamond ring. And then we, we were coming home with my dad and from Mass, and I told him what I had, and he says, well, don't show it to your mother yet, because she had had one of her spells. He worried about her, which is, which is good, I'm glad. Strange spells, and there again with my dad, he never told us what they were. And my guess is that they were little strokes. I think they were, because her hand got, her one hand got kind of numb, and and she would to walk down the sidewalk, she'd have to hold on to my dad because she'd kind of go over to one side. And I think they were, because she died then of a, of a stroke at the age of 62. The first one was born in Portsmouth Naval Hospital in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia, Jan. And then Lori was born South Bend. We lived on Marietta Street. And um, Sally was born when we moved then to 545 Webster Street in Mishawaka. That's where Sally was born. And Ed was born there. Not there, but when we lived there. <laughs> and. Uh, Steve, well, well, then came little Kathleen, our angel up in heaven who's prodding Jesus to take good care of us. I'm, I'm sure that there's, that's the reason. And then came Steve, but then we lived here at 522 West Mishawaka Avenue. And then Maria, so Steve and Maria were both born here at 522. There's a brand new baby at our house. The nicest little gift we've ever had He's a precious sugar plum How much closer we become Since we call each other mommy and dad There's a brand new baby at our house And though he's been there just a little while In the parlor, in the hall Every picture on the wall Seems to know because they all wear a smile I can explain what he does to my heart with his infant charms. I never knew what heaven was till I held an angel in my arms. There's a brand new baby at our house. He's twice as sweet as honey from the comb. He's the image of my spouse, he's the tricky Mickey Mouse, who has changed our happy house to a home. For many years, while the girls were young, I kept them in clothes by sewing their outfits, and I'd 
dressed them alike mainly because I could buy one off of one bolt of fabric. You could get it cheaper than buying different. The patterns worked out better if you just bought one long strip. And, uh, and then Marie Phillips School, where Maria was at one year, they had a little style show. And I made an outfit for Maria and for uh, Katie and Chris. Oh, I gave them Tonys to curl their hair, and oh boy, they, they grumped for the first couple of days, though, because it was too curly. <laughs> Through the years, uh, I cut the boys and Bruce's hair until they were, well, Ed was married before he finally went into a barber. And Steve even had me come down to uh, Bloomington, and he saved his hair, hair for when I came down for a visit, and I cut his hair in the dorm room. Victory. 